watching WNDS and tell a friend. New Hampshire has a new governor, Democrat John Lynch, sworn in this afternoon. From behind prison walls, Pamela Smart is now asking for a pardon. And winter is rolling out just about everything it has to offer in New England today. But will there be any sign of letting up? These stories plus all your day's news now. Live from WNDS TV, this is News Now at 7. The winter storm has been packing a one-two punch here in New England. Good evening, I'm Gail Scott Key. And I'm Eric Shiner. The white stuff continues to fall in parts of New England as it has through much of the day. And we now go to Nicole Papageorge, who is live in Londonderry, New Hampshire, with the latest on the winter weather. Nicole? Thanks, Eric. As you can see here in Londonderry, the snow has stopped and it's made the way for some freezing rain and sleet, which has formed this crust over the snow, making for driving conditions on the commute home even worse than going to work this morning. Now, the first winter storm of 2005 is, of course, officially here, forcing plows, tow trucks, and unfortunately accidents to take center stage. Earlier today in Londonderry, police had to halt traffic on Route 28 for much of the day after an SUV broke a telephone pole. Now, utility crews worked for more than five hours to put a new pole in place. The driver of that SUV was not hurt. The combination of messy weather and uh, many accidents like this throughout New England certainly made for a messy commute. Well, there was a car um, just near exit 4 that was sitting with its wheels up in the air. <laughs> so, anyway, I drove slow. Yeah. Oh, really bad, really bad. Ooh, the roads were rough out there. It, looked like, it doesn't look like they even plowed. The roads were crummy. Yeah. yeah. There was a lot of traffic. We came from Waltham. It's taken us two hours. Um, it's at least an hour extra, yeah. Now, this messy weather is expected to stick around until about midnight tonight. So local officials are expecting you to be safe, go slow, be patient, and also to remember that four-wheel drive does not mean four-wheel stop. We're live in Londonderry, New Hampshire. Nicole Papa George, News Now 19. Well, the winter mess isn't only affecting drivers, it's also making travel difficult at area airports. Cleanup crews have been out since early this morning in Manchester, where many flights have been delayed or canceled. At Boston's Logan Airport, they're also experiencing delays of up to an hour, but travelers say it's normal and expected this time of year. South Florida. And it was going to be 81 degrees there today, and it's, what, 27 here now? That's just a bit of a change. If you're headed to the airport, officials recommend you call your airline first to check on your flight. And before you can even get on the roads today, most people had to shovel out their driveways. News Now's Jennifer Gannon has more on how New England residents were coping with the snow. Across New Hampshire and Massachusetts, most people spent at least part of their day today digging out from this latest winter storm. Uh, typically about an hour, hour and a half. Lou Finelli says he dreads the white stuff, but he's grateful this is only the second time this winter that he's had to do some serious snow removal at his Andover, Massachusetts home. Well, kind of. Not very deep. Um, and uh, the big thing is there's no wind, so it doesn't blow back in your face. Down the street, Michael Fenton was just finishing up his driveway. He says it took him just under an hour. See the upper part of the driveway is wide, so I can't have to keep pushing the same snow over and over again to get it over to the side somewhere. As the snow and freezing rain continued to fall, many people were faced with having to make two, three, and even four shoveling trips throughout the day just to keep their driveways clean. You know, it takes about 20 minutes each time that you do it. And it's filling up quickly, you know, and every time you come out, you're surprised. It's that much more. Stacey Quinn has a positive attitude about Mother Nature's latest Arctic blast. We put in the manpower. We go to the gym, we put in the manpower. <laughs> if we can go to the gym, we can travel our driveway. In Andover, Massachusetts, Jennifer Gannon, WNDS News Now. Indeed, the past 24 hours have been nothing but a wintry nightmare for New Englanders, but it's you're loving it. Just another snowfall, just a New England winter. We're all used to it by now, but will the snow last? And for the answer to that question, we now turn to Al Caprilli. And Al, what can you tell us? Thank you, Gail and Eric. Let's go to the radar. We're in the back edge of the precipitation shield. It's all liquid here outside the station, but you can see the back edge now moving west to east. This will be over before midnight. And we have freezing rain inland. It's all rain along the coast, but there's shallow cold air 
at ground level. The sun returns tomorrow. Look at this. This is great weather for making snowballs. You can see here, I got a nice snowball. Eric, I won't throw it at you. Back to Eric and Gail. See you in the warm studio. Be safe. He's having way too much fun out there. The weather did not have much of an impact on the inauguration of John Lynch as governor of New Hampshire today. News Now's Kerry Page tells us despite the snow, the inauguration ceremony went off without a hitch. A little over two months ago, New Hampshire voters chose the promise of integrity over tradition by dethroning Governor Benson and electing the newcomer. The law of the state of New Hampshire and the law of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Today, it became official. John Lynch became the 80th governor of New Hampshire. This oath represents a sacred trust, a trust placed under my care by the people of New Hampshire. During his campaign, Lynch promised to restore integrity to the office, make government more accessible, and improve government. The people of New Hampshire expect the highest standards of ethics and integrity from us, their elected officials. The only interests we should be considering are the people's interests. But we can't just... experiencing some technical difficulties. We apologize for that. State police have identified the two people who died in a crash on Route 25 West in Wareham, Massachusetts. 26-year-old Suzanne Bernard and 29-year-old Rebecca Myers died in a collision. Authorities say Bernard pulled her SUV into the breakdown lane when the vehicle was struck from behind. They say a car driven by Christopher Jarvis of Hyannis hit Bernard's vehicle. Jarvis and another passenger in his vehicle were hospitalized with serious injuries after the crash. The Granite State does not do enough to fight smoking, according to the American Lung Association. The group flunks the state in its third annual report on how states spend tobacco settlement money and deals with smoking risks. Lung Association President Daniel Fortin says New Hampshire doesn't spend any of the $40 million it receives in the federal tobacco company lawsuit on anti-smoking programs. He's also critical of the state for not banning smoking in bars and restaurants, as has been done in Maine and Massachusetts. Pam Smart, the key figure in New Hampshire's most publicized murder trial, is asking for a pardon. She's repeating her argument that she didn't get a fair trial because of all the media attention and says her sentence was too harsh. Smart was convicted in 1991 of persuading her teenage lover and his buddies to murder her husband. Four teens, including one who admitted pulling the trigger, testified against her. The case prompted several books and a movie. A smile and a sense of shock. That was said to be the reaction today from Andrea Yates after the Texas woman learned that her murder convictions for drowning her three of her five children had been overturned. A three-judge appeals court in Texas sided with the defense claim that Yates had been convicted three years ago partly on a false testimony of a prosecution expert witness. Now, that witness had suggested Yates' action had been linked to those depicted in the television show Law & Order. But in fact, there had never been an episode like the one he described. An attorney for Yates says he won't seek her relief on bail, adding she's where she needs to be for right now. A 32-year-old Lowell man is currently in custody and charged in connection with three armed robberies. Police say Ernesto Diaz held up two locations on Sunday with a syringe that he claimed had AIDS-infected blood. He's also accused of attempting to rob a Domino's pizza in late December. Diaz was arrested yesterday for operating a motor vehicle after suspension. Then he was arraigned this morning on three counts of armed robbery, as well as the motor vehicle charge. And a hearing has been scheduled for a, no a Mormon church volunteer charged with indecent assault on a child. Kevin Curlew was arrested by Methuen police earlier this week. The assault on the alleged victim occurred at the Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints. The Boston Globe reports Curlew once served time in prison for a sexual assault on a child in Maine. But then that conviction was overturned on appeal. A new website hopes to help victims of church sex abuse. The website, victimpower.org, launches today. Its objective is to allow victims of sexual abuse to anonymously communicate with law enforcement and other authorities. Now, they can file a report, ask questions, and maintain control of their case while making the, de the decision excuse me, of whether or not to come forward. Um, nothing like this has existed before. The possibility of uh, reporting what happened anonymously um, does exist, but never has there been the ability for law enforcement to contact that person, you know, ask questions to verify, you know, the facts there. 
The website was developed by It Works Association, a nonprofit organization that focuses on life skills for college-aged people. Well, still ahead on news now, the U.S. Marine who claimed he was kidnapped in Iraq has now been declared a deserter. Car wrecks, down power lines, and fires, all caused by the weather, but it didn't happen in New England. We'll have the details coming up. Discover. Discover the future. Discover your potential with career training in radio and TV production. Challenge yourself to be your best. Imagine the possibilities. Reach your dreams. A rewarding career is waiting for you. All it takes is the right education. All you need to do is pick up the phone. Call Hesser College at 1-800-462-3749. Your future is waiting. Call today. 1-800-462-3749. This leather sofa keeps on selling and selling. It's gorgeous. Maybe because it's so beautiful. And comfortable. Maybe because it sits like a dream. And you can put your feet up. Maybe because it has two recliners. And it's so easy to clean and so durable. Maybe because it's genuine leather everywhere you sit. So where's the label? Maybe because without the expensive brand name label, it's only $9.99. Maybe it's all these things. Maybe you're right. Mm. For the first time since last month's devastating earthquake and tsunami, the death toll estimate has gone down. U.S. State Department officials dropped from 36 to 35 the number of Americans presumed killed in southern Asia. But nearly 3,000 Americans are still reported as missing. News Now correspondent Gary Nuremberg has more on what the U.S. is doing to provide relief. The Pentagon said Thursday it is spending about $6 million a day on relief operations separate from the $350 million the American government has pledged to the humanitarian campaign, money the U.S. continues to distribute. We will continue responding to legitimate demands until 350 is reached. And if more money is needed at that time, then the president will take it under consideration. Powell's remarks followed a tsunami relief summit in Jakarta where world leaders met to coordinate humanitarian response. There was a moment of silence to honor the dead, many of whom remain unidentified. We try to have a DNA uh, test for every dead body and we wait for the matching with the relative of uh, these uh, bodies. About remote provinces of Indonesia? I do not think uh, we are even close to having any figures of how many people died, how many people are missing, how many people are severely affected. The United States State Department is trying to find Americans who are unaccounted for. We're not going to stop until we in fact know everything that can be known. A process that could take weeks. In Washington, Gary Nuremberg, WNDS News Now. What well, does three and a half weeks remain until Iraq's January 30th election? Iraqi officials are dealing with continued insurgent attacks designed to disrupt the planned vote. Interim government officials insist the violence will not derail their plans for democracy. More than 35,000 American troops are slated to patrol the streets of Baghdad on their election day. American forces will coordinate with Iraq security forces to protect voters. U.S. Marine Corporal Wasif Ali Hassoun has been declared a deserter. He failed to return to Camp Lejeune after the holidays. Now, Hassoun already faces desertion charges from disappearing in Iraq last summer. If you remember, he claimed he was kidnapped and held by anti-coalition forces outside the city of Belize for 19 days. And then a look at some lasting news images coming to us from around the world. We may have some bad weather here, but an ice storm today in Oklahoma City caused plenty of problems. At least nine deaths are being blamed on a storm that caused many accidents, downing power lines and leading to several fires. And then in Beaver County, Pennsylvania, heavy rains have caused widespread flooding today in and around Pittsburgh, causing many to evacuate their homes and head to higher ground. Bridges near Wheeling, West Virginia are open again after flooding caused some barges to break their moorings, forcing bridge closures. At one point, as many as 12 barges were floating unmanned on the Ohio River. Three bridges were closed overnight after being struck by one of those unpiloted barges. In Graniteville, South Carolina, dozens were sent to the hospital after an early morning train wreck in which a train car carrying a hazardous chemical ruptured. A number of people in the area had to be treated for respiratory problems. The train car reportedly struck a tree and then a vehicle. No word on what caused that accident. And the first family introdu introduced its newest member to the public this afternoon. President Bush and First Lady Laura Bush introduced Miss Beasley to the press corps today. President Bush gave his wife the Scottish Terrier puppy for her birthday. 
dog is reportedly getting along fine with the other pet of the first family, Barney. And it's the first month of the year, and that means many feeder houses are announcing their 2005 season. We take a look at what's coming ahead in tonight's Entertainment Encore. Many venues across the Granite State are announcing their upcoming seasons, and in Concord, the Capital Center for the Arts has a great one. Kicking off the year with the best of North Shore comedy featuring Robbie Prince on the 22nd. And it's the sounds of Motown. Sweet soul music taking the stage on February 12th with the music of Marvin Gaye, James Brown, and Aretha Franklin. And on February 16th, the popular musical Rent will take the stage. And the New Hampshire Symphony Orchestra performs Mozart Masterpieces. That's in March, followed shortly after by the Peking Acrobats performing their amazing feats. Now, if you'd like more information on the 2005 Capital Center for the Arts season, be sure to log on to ccanh.com. You know, I knew I was missing something on my Christmas list. That little terrier, that is so cute. Oh, I thought you were going to talk to the man holding several tables and another man on top of it. <laughs> That'd be a very unusual gift to get. <laughs> You're right, it would be. And that means it's time for us to take a break. But when we return, meteorologist Al Caprillion will have the complete weather forecast. Subaru weather alert. If you have to go out, make sure you're driving a Subaru. Subaru's all-wheel drive all year long gives the New England driver total safety, comfort, and control. Wouldn't today be a great day to be driving a Subaru? Subaru, America's number one selling all-wheel drive vehicle. All-wheel drive. It's all I'll drive. For details and a list of local Subaru dealers, go to NewEnglandSubaru.com. A message about disability benefits from the lawyers of the Disability Law Group. Social Security may pay disability benefits if a physical condition or a mental condition prevents you from working at least a year. But qualified people are often denied. If denied, you have the right to appeal and the right to a lawyer. Call the Disability Law Group, 1-800-776-776. 2929. There is no fee unless you win. Well, I got my wish of some snow, and now I'm going to make a snowball, and on your way out to your car after the show, I'll be sure to deliver that to you. But I have to tell you both something as being a new stepmom. I thought I'd have to take my stepson in for a hearing. Oh, no, he can hear. He heard that there was no school today, Al. Do they hear Very what they nice. want to hear? Yes, don't they? yes. <laughs> All right, Eric, we'll have more snow for you. It looks like Saturday, so Gail, it just doesn't end. But Sounds maybe, good. Maybe it'll be payback for him next week. Yeah. We'll see what the long-range shots say. All right, here. Okay, David Fenting of Salem. Nice picture. If you have a picture like David, you can send it to us at al at wnds.com. Put your name and hometown in the email. Let's go back to the map. This storm has some harmless leftovers. It's going to pull away. And let's go back to the map now, the local map. We still have rain along the coast. You can see it's above freezing as we get a very slippery roads, allow extra time. Winter storm warning has been uh, continued till 10 p.m. It was till 6. Uh, weather watching tonight, the great young lady, Holly Snyder in Canterbury. We'll get in the valley north of Concord. It's still 19. Meanwhile, it's above freezing along the coast. What a difference from Holly's house to Plymouth, Mass. But remember, they're near the warming influence of the ocean. The most snow I saw was West Hampton out near, oh, out near... Long Meadow out in that part of Massachusetts, Hampshire County, 8.1 inches. The most in southern New Hampshire, the Weather Service in Grace, the Cheshire had 6 inches. Freezing rain in Manchester and Worcester. It's still snowing at 6 o'clock, 23 in Concord. Okay, let's go. Jet stream. Eventually, we're going to have probably a warm-up here. In fact, the long-range computer models say, and I don't like to go this far, is that we could see temperatures exceed 50 degrees next Thursday. But Eric... Uh, Gail, don't get too excited yet because long-range shots, again, can change. There's the back edge. Your frontal system is going to push the storm and all the moisture is ending. High pressure in between systems, 30s and 40s, and the next system now is stronger. We may get one to three inches of snow from this away from the coast. Daddy, we'll have a big update tomorrow. Forecast tonight, if you love Al, if you're going to be out, drive carefully. Partial clearing after midnight, three to six inches, and I called it pretty right for southern New Hampshire. Cheshire, uh, uh, Chester had six, but up to eight, nine inches, portions of central mass. For tomorrow, yippee, the sun returns, 35 to 40, control room, take it away, seven day shows that we're going to have another potpourri of uh, precipitation. I think snow inland, snow sleet to rain at the coast, 
from mid-morning to early afternoon, clearing Saturday night, and then, look at that, scale, it may warm up for you the end of next week, but let's focus on the short term first. See you tonight, back to Gail, Eric, and Mike. Thanks, Al, I'll finally get my son. You know, we get snow, cold mm -hmm. weather, then it bounces back up high. It bounces a lot like a basketball, Mike. Oh, it sure does, Eric. Wow, that was very creative. The best college basketball New Hampshire has to offer is on display tonight as the UNH Wildcats bounce in Durham and the Southern New Hampshire Penman and St. Anselm Hawks renew their rivalry in Manchester. Plus, I'll tell you which Patriots are named All-Pro and members of the Super Bowl champs will share with us just what it takes to win in the playoffs. These stories and more in a celebration of sports next. The more you shop and compare, the more you come to my Bob. Where's the proof? that their microfiber sofa and love seat at hundreds of dollars more is better than yours at only $7.99. I always do the right thing so you can do your thing. Your choice of color still only $7.99. So where's the proof that theirs is better? Mine at only $7.99 proof that if I do the right thing, you will come. Poor Frank. Food coma, you know, huge buffet, comfy chair, instant nap. Me, I grabbed McDonald's salad at my desk. After all, Frank and I are up for the same promotion. McDonald's premium salads are just $3.99 each. Choose from a Caesar, Bacon Ranch, or California Cobb with grilled or crispy chicken. Sorry, who's on the phone with China? And now, sports with Mike DeBlasi. The goal of any player in the NFL is to one day earn himself a Super Bowl ring. The mark of a champion, the reward for a season of dedication and performance. Many members of the Patriots own a pair of these finger jewels. And as the team prepares to make a run at a third championship, those who have been to the promised land are offering words of wisdom on what it takes to reach the top. It's an opportunity that we need to do everything we can to take advantage of. and and. Um, be ready to maximize our performance next Sunday. And that's everything we got, we, we need to put into this one. And don't don't think that it'll ever, ever be there again. Um, but there's no guarantee that it will. These opportunities don't come along very often. And it's, you know, it's, it's almost like, what would the, what's the price you would pay for the success? I mean, what would you give up to win this game? I mean, would you give up a week of not doing anything but preparing for football? And, you know, I, I would, and I do, and, and that's the excitement about it. And it, when you achieve what we've achieved, I think you look back and you say, God, there's just, whatever price I had to pay was, was just minuscule compared to the joy and, and the excitement of what we accomplished. In terms of individual accomplishments, four Patriots named today to the Associated Press All-Pro team. Defensive lineman Richard Seymour selected to the first squad for the second straight season. He's joined there by kicker Adam Vinatieri, recognized for the first time in his career. Chosen to the second team, a pair of Pats defensive standouts, safety Rodney Harrison and linebacker Teddy Bruschi. One player, a unanimous choice, receiving all 48 votes cast from a nationwide panel of football writers and broadcasters. Not surprisingly, he's the Colts' record-setting quarterback, Peyton Manning. Not an all-pro, but a Pro Bowl season for Drew Brees, earning the Chargers quarterback the NFL's Comeback Player of the Year award. Brees slated for a backup role, but earning the starter's nod and passing for 3,100 yards, 27 touchdowns, and just seven interceptions, while leading the Bolts to the AFC West title. Well, the Celtics return to the parquet floor tomorrow night for a tip with the defending NBA champion Detroit Pistons. Boston will be shooting for a third straight win coming off last night's 84-83 topping of the Golden State Warriors. Gary Payton returning from a one-game absence, proving his sore hamstring good enough for 13 points and five assists. Celebrating his 20th birthday, rookie Al Jefferson records his first career double-double with 10 points and 11 boards off the bench. And Paul Pierce produces a game-high 19 points plus eight boards and eight dimes. It's the Green's D that seals the deal, forcing a tough game-winning attempt from the Warriors in the closing seconds. On the college court right now, UNH is bouncing with America East Conference foe Albany, each team shooting to reach the 500 mark this season. I'll recap the action from Lundholm Gym on News Now at 10. Also at 10, I'll hit you with highlights of another hoops affair. This, a clash of Division II powers and city rivals, Southern New Hampshire and St. Anselm. 
The 41st meeting all time between the schools, and you won't find two better coached programs than these. Stan Spiro for the Penman and Keith Dixon for the Hawks. Different in style, the same in energy, effort, attitude, and the winning results. Always interesting when these two teams hook up, though the last five meetings, uh, the average outcome has been 21 points. Ooh, well, well. Interesting to see what happens. Right, thanks Mike. a lot, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Well, straight ahead, there has been lots of wedded bling-bling being put on the fingers of high-profile stars. We'll let you know who when we return. Bud's Bar and Pool, the place to go for all your swimming and warm water relaxation needs. This season, it's time to get out of the cold and get yourself into some hot water. From sales, service, and accessories to all the good stuff that keeps your water clean. Come see why Advanced Fine Pool has been awarded Retailer of Excellence. Call us, call us, A-S-A-P. Advanced Fine Pool. Hello, Mike. Discover. Discover the future. Discover your potential with career training in marketing. Challenge yourself to be your best. Imagine the possibilities. Reach your dreams. A rewarding career is waiting for you. All it takes is the right education. All you need to do is pick up the phone. Call Hesser College at 1-800-524-7669. Your future is waiting. Call today, 1-800-524-7669. Wedding bells are ringing for a pair of high-profile couples, and MTV decides to extend the run of its hit reality show, The Real World. No seven strangers here, just the true story in tonight's Hollywood Minute. Valentine's Day is still six weeks away, but love is already in the air. Jude Law has announced his engagement to Alfie co-star Sienna Miller. He popped the question Christmas morning. Supermodel Heidi Klum and singer Seal are also going to tie the knot. The pair became engaged two days before Christmas on a glacier in British Columbia. MTV will be keeping it real for at least another five years. The cable network has announced that the real world has been renewed through 2008. The reality series premiered in 1992. If you think there is an excess of reality shows, get ready for one more. The rock band In Excess will search for a new lead singer in the CBS series tentatively titled Rockstar. Auditions for the show will begin January 20th. CBS hopes to begin airing the show this summer. And that's your Hollywood Minute. I'm Brooke Anderson. All right. I think Al should audition. Al, you want to be the new lead <laughs> singer for an excess? Or do you just want to do the weather? If you nominate me, I'll try it. Should I try it? I think you should. What do I got go. to lose, right? Let's start with the weather. Well, I won't be as up and down as this business, okay? Being a, a singer, right? Uh, da da Okay, up and down. Here we go. 8.1 inches as of 4 this afternoon, West Hampton, Mass. So some areas had about 8 inches. The quiet sound tomorrow, we can relax. More snow, sleet, and rain Saturday morning and early afternoon. And then after that, a quiet sound. But again, we could get a few inches of snow. That storm may intensify the upper level energy. Daddy, so stay tuned tomorrow. Oh, bring me the sunshine. Anyways, here's a look at some of the stories we're working on for you tonight at 10. Why was the president's latest pick as the next attorney general in the hot seat today on Capitol Hill? And the Retailers Association says merchants enjoyed some solid sales growth, but did the holiday shopping fall short of their expectations? This has been News Now at 7. We thank you for joining us. I'm Dale Scott Key. And I'm Eric Shiner. Have a good evening. Call Hesser College at 800-524-7669. That's 800-524-7669.